Another type of structure found in the genome is called a pseudogene. It is basically a gene that, in some time in the past, had errors occur in its regulatory sequence and quit functioning. Since these structures have no current function, the only reason multiple species would carry this pseudogene is common inheritance. There are very many examples of pseudogenes shared between primates and humans. One is the psi eta globin gene, a hemoglobin pseudogene. It is not shared by all mammals, only the primates. And in primates, it is found in the exact same chromosomal location, with the same mutations that destroyed its ability to function as a protein coding gene. A third type of structure found within the genome. Is also direct evidence of genetic relationships. Retroviruses like HTLV1, which cause a type of leukemia, and AIDS, make a DNA copy of their own viral genome and insert it into the host genome. If this happens inside the sperm cells or the egg cells, the retroviral DNA will be inherited by the descendants of the host. And these copies of the virus DNA are called endogenous retroviruses. In human DNA, there are about 30,000 endogenous retroviruses. There are at least seven distinct instances of identical retrogene insertions shared between chimps and humans. The phylogenetic tree for cats provide another example. The standard phylogenetic tree has small cats diverging later than large cats. The small cats, for example, the jungle cat, European wild cat, African wild cat, black-footed cat, and domestic cat, share a specific retroviral gene insertion. In contrast, all other carnivores which diverged earlier lack this sequence. Let's examine how endogenous retroviruses, or ERVs, would behave within a model of evolution by common descent. Suppose an ancient creature, let's call it Primus mammalius, is the common ancestor of all modern mammals and is infected by a retrovirus that becomes endogenous. All of the Primus descendants would be expected to carry the same ERV. Let's call it ERV1 in the same chromosomal location. Fast forward 30 million years. Different lineages have evolved and derived from the original common ancestor, and there are now many different types of mammals in existence, all carrying ERV1. A small rodent, let's call it Secundus mousis. Is the common ancestor of mice and rats, and once again is infected by a new species-specific retrovirus that becomes endogenous. This is ERV2. In a different line, Secundus apus, the common ancestor of all great apes, acquires a third retrovirus, ERV3. Moving forward 30 million years again, a fourth ERV appears in mitochondrial Eve, the common ancestor of all modern humans. Call it ERV4. As early humans spread out, a fifth ERV arises in a population that is isolated in Australia. So ERV5 does not spread to other human populations. So what do we expect? Humans, chimps, mice, and rats should all possess ERV1. The mouse and rat genomes will also contain ERV2. 
the virus that infected their common ancestor, but not the primate-specific ERV3, ERV4, and ERV5 insertions. All great apes will share an identical ERV3 insertion. All humans will possess an ERV4 insertion that is not found in the chimps or other apes. In addition, some, but not all, humans will carry an insertion of ERV5. And of course, the rodent-specific ERV2 insertion will not be found in any primate species. Now that several genomes have been sequenced, we have begun to test these predictions. The patterns of ERV insertions observed in modern species exactly match the predictions made by the model described above. Some insertions are shared between humans and mice and represent truly ancient viral infections. Others are found only in primates and not the other species, obviously derived from the infection of the ancestral primate species after its divergence from other lineages. More modern insertions are found only in humans. While the youngest ERVs of all are found in some humans, but not in all. We do not find any examples of ERV insertions shared by, say, humans and mice, but not by chimps. Insertions are always shared by all species, and only by those species that have a common ancestor. ERV insertions therefore provide excellent support for the idea of common descent. This evidence, viewed from a scientific perspective, together with a vast amount of similar data, is compelling evidence for the following conclusions. Common descent is a fact. All life on Earth is related through common ancestry. Changes within a single species occur, so-called microevolution. Species themselves come and go, so-called macroevolution. These are the facts of evolution. The mechanism or mechanisms that cause evolution to happen will be covered in another video.